I've used Lightroom since I started my nature photography career, and I love it. I have a nice workflow that I don't want to deviate from. But Lightroom has some shortcomings, especially as relates to handling of noise, sharpness, and color fidelity. What if there was a quick, easy, and painless way for me to start with the best version of my RAW files for every image I have in my catalog, past, present, and future? Let's check out DxO Pure RAW. Hola amigos, Greg Basco here in my home office slash dragon lair. Apparently what is going on in here? I'll tell you what, the pandemic has turned me into a kind of video lighting geek. I've been watching lots of YouTube videos and uh, I had this cool picture of uh, dwarf iguanas uh, close up of the eye from Ecuador that I took a few years ago. So there you go. That's the scene for tonight, dragon's lair. But I want to talk to you tonight about DxO's new product, Pure Raw. Lightroom has some limitations, and that's why photographers recently have been exploring or even maybe moving wholesale to options such as Capture One uh, that has a pretty nice price point, although if you shoot Canon, you'll have to get the full suite rather than just picking by camera brand. Not sure why that is, but Capture One has the library interface of Lightroom. Uh, it has great uh, color ability. It has great noise sharpening, all, all these sorts of things that people swear by. I've never tried it. But a lot of people love it and it even has layers uh, you know something that you would switch over to photoshop for whereas in lightroom obviously you don't have layers um, by the way lightroom camera raw those are doing the same thing other people have been looking at dxo's full service option you know library and image processing all in one called dxo photo lab and it has a pretty nice price point i think it's around 129 dollars or something like that but going either of those routes means that you have to completely overhaul and transform your entire image workflow. I'm guessing there must be a lot of us out there who really don't want to spend the time and the money, but especially the time to do that. And that's why I'm guessing that's why they've released recently DxO Pure Raw. So I'm quite intrigued by what DxO Pure Raw might have to offer us. In my nature photography, I shoot a lot of different things. I shoot macro stuff, I shoot telephoto things, I shoot landscapes, I shoot night landscapes, I do wide angle wildlife, I even do camera trapping and aerial shots with a drone. So I wanted to address in this review, this lengthy review, six questions that relate to my style and interests of shooting in nature photography, but also what Pure Raw promises to deliver us. So these are the six questions I'm going to address in this review. First off, will it help us out even with newer cameras, but when we have to shoot at high ISO with our telephoto lenses, for me, that means birds in the rainforest, mammals in the rainforest, or whatever, birds and mammals, you know, different wildlife with telephoto in low light of any kind. Second, how about how would it do with night landscapes where we're constantly fighting, even with the newer camera bodies and fast wide primes, for night shooting, we're still fighting with a lot of noise from high ISOs usually at night. Or if we're going really long for star trails, we're fighting a different kind of noise as it builds up on the sensor. Third, I wanted to know how it would work with older files, with some of our favorite image files that we took with cameras in the past that used to be great in their day, but now are not looking so great in terms of their ISO and you know just general sensor performance, maybe dynamic range. Fourth, related to dynamic range, can pure raw help us even in those high contrast landscape scenes that we all love to photograph? Let's say at sunset, at sunrise, would it help us be able to maybe pull even more clean, really nice shadow detail out of the darker areas of those images? And then fifth, I wanted to know if it would help even with those low ISO, low ISO photos we take that are really well exposed, tack sharp, and super clean. Is there any reason to try to run those through pure raw or are we just wasting our time? And then sixth, I wanted to know about drone photos. I don't even, before I started this, now I know it does work with drone photos, but I didn't even know if it would. And it actually worked pretty well, little spoiler alert. And bigger spoiler alert, I've been pretty impressed with DxO Pure Raw. And so we're gonna go in depth in this video. It's gonna be a long video, but I really wanted to give an overview of all sorts of different types of nature photography and how DxO Pure Raw might be able to help us, when we might want to use it, when we might want to refrain from using it because there's no need. So to help you out with this long video, 
I've segmented this video across the timeline. And so you'll see that as you move across the timeline, as you watch the video. And also, if you just look down below, you'll see all the different sections with timestamps and you can quickly jump to the section that most interests you at any time. If you want to watch the whole thing, I suggest you grab a cup of coffee, lemonade, maybe a cold microbrew, and let's have some fun. What I've done is to create a number of collections in Lightroom that address the questions that are framing this review. And it also reflects my varied shooting style. I didn't want to just show you bird pictures or just landscape pictures because I shoot a little bit of everything, camera traps, night stuff, flash, you know, telephoto, wide angle, macro, all that sort of thing. And so I want this review to reflect that so that no matter what you shoot in nature photography, hope you'll, hopefully you'll get some value out of this. So I have all these little um, collections. Let's pick the first one, which actually is more kind of telephoto. And this is where I would expect DxO Pure Raw to really shine. Here's a Kiel Build Toucan I took years ago here in Costa Rica. And it's a high ISO image. It's 2500 with the Canon 5DSR, which is not a high ISO noise champ. It's a great camera but high ISO performance was never its strong suit. And, you know, I used that ISO because I wanted to get 1 1600th because it was raining, and I thought this toucan at some point is going to shake his head and shake off all these uh, all the raindrops, and it could be a cool picture. Here's my raw file with nothing done to it. And you can see it's pretty noisy out there in the background, pretty noisy in the, in the feathers and, and all that stuff, even in the beak. I process this picture using my normal Lightroom workflow where I would apply noise reduction globally and then I do some brush work on the bird to bring uh, to reduce the noise reduction to bring back some of the original detail and then I'll also do some sharpening and stuff like that. I've heard people say before you should just globally noise reduce and then use the sharpening slider in Lightroom along with the masking feature. That can work to a degree, but you're not bringing back any of the original detail in the feathers of a, of a bird or in the fur of a mammal by that way. You really need to use a brush, I think, so you can, you can try to strike what's hopefully a good balance. And that's not bad. It's certainly an improvement from the original RAW file to where I went with Lightroom. It took some time though, I'll tell you what, and DxO just knocked it out of the park on the first swing that's pretty good. I wouldn't really have to do anything to this picture in terms of noise reduction and, um, you know, bringing back detail in the bird, doing all that. And so it was a much easier solution and it really, really worked for this image. So I'm definitely happy with that. Nice job, DxO. This is a crimson rumped toucanet, crimson rumped toucanet, I think from Ecuador. Uh, I love shooting through stuff. And this was on one of my first scouting trips to Ecuador years ago. And, you know, I have a fairly high ISO, ISO 1250, not, not bad, my old Canon 5 DSR again. And I have nice, uh, nice detail on this guy. Again, this is my raw file. There's, there's a little noise. It could be better, a little noise in the background. And DxO again, I think just nailed it right off. Look at that uh, clean detail on the beak, uh, in the feathers, and it cleaned up the noise in the background. And so again, I think that that's a real time saver for me not having to go in and do any brush work or, or anything like that in Lightroom. Here's one of Ecuador's coolest birds. And years ago, I went to scout this new place. Now some other people have discovered it, but it was new at the time. And I think we were the first ones to take workshops there to photograph the amazing plate build mountain toucan. I love this picture. Um, I, I just think it stands out against the, the dark background and I exposed it this way intentionally. Pretty high ISO, ISO 2000 and one two hundred thousandth of a second. I was hand holding because I was, um, you know, with, with some people and I couldn't get a tripod in, which is fine. I, I prefer to hand hold for a lot of this stuff anyway, because you don't know where the bird's going to land. But anyway, it's a pretty good looking file. This is taken with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary zoom lens. It's a sharp lens, man. I'll tell you what. But there's some noise in here, as expected. And as I want to do for this PSD version, I did, again, noise reduction in the background, and then I worked the bird with uh, with some brushes and everything. A pretty nice improvement, I think. But look what DxO Pure Raw did with this right off the bat. Uh, that's, that's it. You, you don't need anything else, I, I don't think, for this photo. And I would be done. Just take a look at some of the details in the, the kind of the rump. And again, this is my best try, uh, you know, trying to get rid of some of the noise in Lightroom. This is the original RAW file. 
where there's definitely more noise. And so again, I think DxO, clear winner on this one and a real time saver. Here's another one from Ecuador. These are some buff-tailed coronets fighting near a feeder at one of my favorite uh, high elevation cloud forest lodges. This is right at the end of the day. This is ISO 3200 and 1 60th of a second. I basically kept shooting because I liked the background. I liked what was going on, but I knew it wasn't going to be like a prize winning photo in terms of, uh, you know, being the cleanest, sharpest photo I ever took. Nonetheless, it's not bad. I got these guys sharp. I think I was using a tripod this time, which probably helped, but a lot of noise. And again, I could deal with it in Lightroom uh, through some, some, some gyrations and, and gymnastics. But DxO, I think, gave me a better result right out of the gate. And again, a real time saver. So another win. This is the Eastern Andean subspecies of the famous cock of the rock uh, that I took in Ecuador. And this is, again, high ISO, ISO 3200 with the 5DS, 1 100th one of a second, and I was hand-holding here. This guy surprised my workshop group at, at lunch, and we all went out and grabbed our cameras and got some, some really cool shots. These guys are hard to find, except for at one place in Ecuador, but to find the subspecies, doubly hard. But there's a lot of noise in this photo, and, you know, these guys are, are tricky. They're related to Cotingas in, in terms of, uh, you know, bird families. And they're just weird because they don't have a lot of feather detail in these areas, you know. But I was hoping DxO raw, uh, pure raw, could save me some time. And I'll tell you what, it sure did. Again, it took out a lot of noise in here, and you might think that's, that looks weird. But like I said, th there's really no, even when you look at these guys just uh, out with your eyes or binoculars, there's no fine feather detail in these uh, kind of orange parts, or the red parts for the, the Western Andean subspecies. And so I think... Pure Raw did quite a good job here. The one thing I noticed, if we look at is at the, the feathers on the back here, some of these coverts, DxO Pure Raw wiped out some of the detail in this area and along the edges of the feathers. Uh, I like everything else about it, but that's kind of a problem. You know, DxO Pure Raw doesn't have any way to do this selectively to dial things in or anything like that. It's kind of all or nothing, which is in one way good. It's simple. But let's say I really liked everything else that was going on, which I did, but I wanted to bring back some of the detail uh, that I think DxO wiped out too much. I could grab a brush, and again, I'll double click effect just to um, wipe out any, any pre existing. Uh, adjustments I have. And I think what I would try to do quickly here is just add in some clarity and texture to feather in the areas that I think DxO robbed us of some detail in there. I think I could go more aggressive. Maybe a little sharpness too. And that is starting to look a little better. You, you get the idea though, I think, that, that you can use the brush or a radio filter or a grad filter or whatever you want to in, in Lightroom to uh, kind of bring things to where you want them. See, see what I did? There's a before the brush, after the brush. I think that looks a little better. And uh, so that, that I think is a good way to work. This is a common squirrel monkey in Yasuni National Park in Ecuador, enjoying a delicious snack of a caterpillar, crunchy on the outside, nice chewy center, apparently. And um, not my best photo ever, not super sharp, pretty high ISO, ISO 1600 is taken from a canoe, but the behavior was cool. Let's see if DxO Pure Raw can help me out with this one. And I think it did. It certainly did a good job, again, with, uh, with noise reduction in the background, and it sharpened things up a little bit. It, it, looks, it looks okay. Again, not my finest photo, and, and you know, I don't really like the composition or anything like that, but the, it was a cool moment. But I think DxO Pure Raw certainly helped. Let's go back to Ecuador again for another high ISO photo. ISO 3200 at 1 1 60th of a second. And I was hand-holding for this one also in a, in, a, in a really dark forest, but a cool bird. This golden mannequin looks pretty good. A lot of noise. It's certainly not my sharpest photo ever. Um, and it's not going to be even after DxO takes a crack at it. But let's see how they did. And 
I would say that's a pretty decent improvement. These guys are jet velvet black, so I'm not really that worried about not having, uh, you know, feather detail in here. If I had had a flash, maybe I would have used a, a little bit of fill flash that could have helped out a little bit, but I didn't. But again, DxO, I think, gave me a much better starting point for this picture. And let's take a look at one more from Ecuador early in the morning, 3200, 1250 of a second. I was hand-holding. I was, I was actually with a group when I took this shot. And so I got them all set up in chairs and their tripods and everything. And I kind of stood behind or squatted behind and handheld and, and uh, stole a few shots for myself once everybody was set up. But this is a strong build woodpecker, eat, or wood creeper, sorry, eating some kind of moth. And, you know, I think my focus uh, was off. I think I focused more on the moth than on the bird's eye, but still not a bad photo. And I, the moth scales flying everywhere are cool, not for the moth, but, but cool for us to see. Uh, a lot of noise in there. And again, DxO Pure Raw, I think did quite a good job here. And I could try in Lightroom to accentuate the sharpness a little bit in the head. I suppose if I really, really love this photo, I could try taking it later into Topaz Sharpen AI or something like that and see if I would save it. But again, in this case, DxO Pure Raw very quickly gave me a good starting point that will get me on my way. And I think I could salvage this photo and, and make something out of it. So I think DxO Pure Raw for you know newer cameras where you're using high ISO, especially for telephoto, bird and wildlife and things like that. And uh, I, I think running it through DxO Pure Raw would definitely be a, a good idea to try. Another area where DxO Pure Raw should shine is in night landscapes. And so I've chosen a little selection here of some night landscape or wide angle wildlife photos in a couple cases uh, to see how DxO Pure Raw compares to, in some cases, my best efforts in Lightroom and Photoshop in terms of dealing with some noise and also just to see how it compares to the raw file and, and how it works. We saw before this uh, bat photo that I showed you quickly when we were going through the workflow, and we saw that it really helped, DxO Pure Raw really helped in terms of getting a little cleaner shadow detail. Again, not my uh, sharpest photo on, on this guy because he was a little bit behind the plane of focus on our flower, but definitely DxO Pure Raw gave a better result than what I was able to achieve in, in Lightroom. And I assume what one could do in Photoshop as well. Here's another shot. Really cool salt lake, a uh, little salt lake in the high Atacama Desert of Chile. Again, with the Milky Way. And I shot this with a Canon 5 DSR at uh, ISO value of 4000. It was a really, really dark moonless night, which is good for Milky Way. Not good for, for ISOs, I suppose. And this guy is noisy. Man, is it noisy. Just take a look at the foreground, the, the little pond. Uh, everything. Noise everywhere. I tried to deal with it as best I could through a combination of, um, you know, global noise reduction in Lightroom, some brushwork and different things like that. This is a really big file, so it takes a while to load up. But what I was able to achieve is okay. I, I thought it was okay before. Now that DxO Pure Raw has come out, I'm not quite sure that it's that okay. I really lost a lot uh, you know, it just smoothed everything out 
a lot, and there's just not much detail in there at all. Stars are okay, but when you do uh, noise reduction in, in Lightroom, I've noticed, or, you know, noise reduction in a lot of applications, it tends to really, uh, you know, um, erase effectively some of the fainter stars. Let's see how DxO Pure Raw did on this one. And I think it did a much better job than what I was able to achieve. Let's just take a look at this foreground here. Definitely a little more detail in there. It just looks better all around. If we move on throughout the frame, we can see that, that the sky looks better. I think in the, yeah, see that in the, this is again my, my Lightroom version. There are a lot more of those fainter stars, like I said, that are still recorded in the DxO Pure Raw version. So definitely a win there for DxO Pure Raw. Uh, let's take another one I took of an eyelash pit viper at night near the Arenal volcano. ISO 3200 of a flash uh, off camera on the on the snake. These guys are nocturnal. And I did this with the help of uh, some of my some friends who have a, a snake zoo thing. So this is not like a a wild snake that I came upon. It's not something I would submit to a contest or anything like that, but it's a pretty cool photo and it was fun to do. Nonetheless, it is quite noisy, as one would expect. And just the snake, there's not a lot of detail there. Uh, you know, I'm, I was close to him with a 15 millimeter lens and it, it's just an okay. It's an okay raw file that again, I could try to work with in various ways. But I think DxO gave me a really nice head start. Look at look at the difference of that right there. That is a pretty astounding difference to me right on that snake. Uh, that looks like I might have shot it at ISO 400 or something like that instead of ISO 3200. And let's just take a look at some of the other parts of the image. And again, I think much better with DxO and with much less kind of work and trying out stuff and, and moving sliders and adjustment brushes and things like that in Lightroom. DxO got me on my way quite quickly. Let's look at one more night image, kind of a non-traditional one. These are some bats, millions of Mexican free-tailed bats uh, that were exiting a cave in New Mexico and actually an ancient lava tube. I got invited to be part of this little project up there a few years ago and I was tasked with taking pictures of these bats. So I had to go down into the cave there were, you know, at the time I was really worried about rattlesnakes down there because there were a ton of them. And I'd still be worried about the rattlesnakes, but today I would be worried about some sort of virus, right? I wrapped up in a, in a, a bandana and stuff like that around my mouth. But if I did this again ever, I, I definitely would uh, take some more precautions. But let's, uh, I had ISO 3200 again, and this is kind of that, that after, right after dusk sky, you know, kind of blue hour sky. And so I was exposing for that, and then I had two flashes off camera to do some work on the bats. And I, I got some really cool shots out of this. But it's noisy. Let's take a look at uh, kind of the star of the show, this guy. Pretty good detail in there. And I wanted this kind of ghostly x-ray look for the bats, which I got, which I thought was fun. Here's my version, processing it with Lightroom noise reduction. And then some brushes. I believe I had a brush on that guy. And maybe a couple of the other bats. To try to bring back, as I showed you with the uh, the previous section with telephoto. Um, yeah, you can see the, the bats that are lit up in red. What I did is that I tried to kind of reduce the noise reduction on them a little bit. You can see over here, uh, maybe bring back a little sharpness, bring back a little clarity. You know, since I wiped out noise throughout the image, I'm trying to brush out that noise reduction on the bats and bring back a little of the original detail. And, you know, not a bad job. Looks pretty good. But let's see what DxO Pure Raw was able to do. And I think it did a better job, uh, again, right out of the gate for me so that I don't have to do so much brushwork. It almost looks like maybe he's a little over sharpened. Again, quick fix there if I needed to. If I really needed to, I could grab a brush and I could do a range mask or get fancy, but I could easily just brush out a little bit of the sharpness in there if I needed to, if I thought it was over sharpened. Look, it really does look like kind of like a, an x-ray, doesn't it? I, I never get tired of looking at these photos. It was a, such a fun experience and a super challenging um, photo to take. Uh, and I got some better ones. This isn't the best one, but I thought it was a good one for demo purposes. So. 
My conclusion at the end of this set, this uh, section is that I think definitely for night landscapes or kind of night wildlife with wide angle lenses where they're essentially night landscapes, I would definitely consider running these photos through DxO Pure Raw first to give me a really, really nice, clean, detailed starting point. As I mentioned, and as DxO promises, Pure Raw should be great for bringing out better versions of some of our favorite old photos. So I put together kind of a varied collection here with some telephoto stuff, some uh, night stuff, and even a camera trap shot down there at the bottom that, that we'll look at last in this section uh, of pictures from older cameras. For instance, let's start with this cool Green Crown Brilliant hummingbird in the cloud forest of Costa Rica. This was shot with the 7D Mark II and I used ISO 4000. And I wanted, you know, these birds were flying around a little bit sometimes, so I wanted a good shutter speed, 1 12 50th. So the light wasn't like it was the end of the day, but there, it was a cloudy day. There wasn't a lot of light and ISO 4000 is really pushing it on the 7D2. I used a tiny bit of fill flash here as well. By the way, this is an ornamental banana flower and it grows upright. The flower is not upside down. You know, the regular banana that we eat hangs down. These don't. So don't mention that in the comments. The flower is right. Take a look. Not bad for ISO 4000, I have to say, on, on a Canon 7D2, but certainly a lot of noise that I'd, I'd like to take care of. I did a version of this, and I actually published this full page in a magazine a few years ago, and it looked great, even at those settings from, you know, a camera that, that never was a high ISO champ. And so I processed it using Lightroom, where I noise reduced globally, and then did some brushwork on the banana flower, banana inflorescence, and the bird to try to take out some of that noise reduction and retain some of the original detail. Not too bad, but take a look at what Pure Raw did to this file. That is pretty good right out of the box. Uh, no noise in the background, but look at the detail on the inflorescence and in the bird. Heck of a lot better from where we started with the raw file. And I think even better than my efforts using my tried and true uh, Lightroom techniques. I think Pure Raw pretty much nailed it right out of the box. You know, in this, in this file, I darkened things a little bit, but I'm just looking at how it retained the detail in the feathers and got rid of noise everywhere else. That would have saved me quite a bit of work in Lightroom. So that's a, that's a win for sure. Here's another old photo, a really, really noisy photo that was probably one of the first photos I took of landscapes here in Costa Rica. This was a, a really cool night on a beach on the Pacific coast here in Costa Rica. And it was low tide, so this is all just an expansive beach. And then there was actually a, a car parked over here that was fortuitously lighting up this uh, kind of little rock island with the palm trees perfectly. And this picture is noisy. Man, look at that. I haven't even done anything to this picture at all in Lightroom. This is just straight out of the camera. And it's noisy. It's a Canon 5D and it's at ISO 3200. Um, so that's, a, you know, it's, it's a noisy file. I work this file in, in Lightroom using noise reduction and then trying to bring back some sharpening. And this was my best attempt. Not too bad. Let's take a look at how DxO did. Mm, maybe a little better. This one's kind of a tough call. I mean, it's certainly a huge difference from where we started in the raw file. But again, my best effort at processing it the, the old school way in Lightroom and DxO's first take on it. Uh, I'm a little ambiguous about this one. You, you know, I don't know. T tough call. <laughs> we'll call that one maybe a tie. Here's another old photo that suffers from very, very high ISOs as well, just because I took it years ago. Amazing, amazing experience I had with a couple of friends of mine, Greg Downing and Nick Hawkins, uh, on a beach on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, like 
10 years ago probably and I went out with Nick to scout this place first and then I thought wow this has some potential uh, to photograph this lone mangrove tree at high tide on a beach we had to do it at about midnight or one in the morning because that's when high tide was and we had to walk in about an hour and a half along the beach and it was a lot of fun we took a six pack of beer so that, that helped us pass the time i walked a few um i don't know maybe almost 100 meters down the beach to the right so that i could light paint the mangrove tree with a small flashlight and i tried to create kind of a baffle so that the light wouldn't spill across the scene but rather would sort of look like it was being lit up by the stars and that and so we, we were pretty happy with that and it was a fun night but man is this noisy this was a canon 1d mark IV at iso 5000 and there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of weird just kind of uh, i don't know there's a lot of weird stuff even like some kind of banding stuff going on through here and i processed this again and i darkened some things maybe more than I should have in the foreground, but again, I was just trying to get rid of noise. And the stars are certainly better than in the original. I, I like the, you know, I darken things intentionally to make it pop a little more. But if you look in here, I just wasn't able to do much with this, some of this weird noise in here. So let's take a look at what DxO Pure Raw could do with it. And that's not bad right off. Um, look at that, the stars are pretty good, pretty noise free. And, you know, there's still some noise, but it's a lot smoother and cleaner in terms of there not being um, kind of these weird patchy, uh, you know, blotches of, of still remaining noise and, and just kind of strange stuff going on. And, and you know, even again, look at the, uh, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're out there and we were surprised that we had bioluminescent dinoflagellates lighting up the beach as the waves crashed. And so that was just a huge surprise and an important part of the photo, obviously, right? But look at here in my attempt, um, it's not very sharp. I think I kind of prefer this. So I would say, yeah, DxO1 on this one. Let's look at a bird photo. I took this also with the Canon 1D Mark IV. ISO 3200, that was pretty high ISO for this guy. And this is my original RAW file. Not bad at all, really. I mean, there's some noise, certainly. But, but not too bad. Here's what DxO did for me, and I think this is a much better result right out of the gate. Look, it got rid of quite a bit of the noise in the background. I think that looks fine. And it added some nice sharpness and detail, even in the feathers, while it also got rid of some of the noise in there. And so I think this is definitely a winner. Could I have done just about as well if I process process this in Lightroom, you know, using some brushes and things like that. Probably, but man, it was a lot faster just to do this. And now I'm on my way editing this picture for whatever else I might want to do to it, which actually wouldn't be very much, I don't think. Here's a, another shot from the Cloud Forest of Costa Rica, one of my favorite lodges called Bosque de Paz. I was there doing some camera trap stuff for a margay, a little jungle cat. And one night when I came back, the moon was out and so I decided to grab my Canon 5D Mark II and a Sigma 15mm fisheye lens and do a, a little shot. Uh, I saw 2000 and, you know, there, there's, there's some noise, but it's not terrible. And, but I thought, why not give DxL Pure Raw a shot and see what it does? And I'll tell you what, I didn't like it because right out of the gate, it tried to correct too much i think for the the distortion of the fisheye lens and i actually wanted to use the distortion of the fisheye lens kind of as as part of the creative component for this shot so i don't like what it did to this rocky uh cascade foreground here it kind of straightened things out and i lost the moon up there you know and so i i don't really like what it did i will say this i think the detail in part of the lodge back there is quite a bit better than what i have in my file it's just uh, cleaner and crisper but overall i don't like what it did with the fisheye so i don't think i would probably be using dxl pure raw on fish eyes if if i were using the fisheye to uh you know to have that creative effect of the fisheye if i wanted to get rid of it different story this is a napo saber wing taken on the eastern slopes of the andes in ecuador really cool bird this is a 7D2 file, also ISO 3200, not the darkest of light. I was still able to get 1 800th, but these birds were flying around a feeder at the lodge we were staying, so I wanted some shutter speed. 
Not a bad result at all. I think I got my focus on pretty well, but it's pretty noisy in there, right? I could deal with this again. Look, there are some little uh, mites and things like that, that that live on hummingbirds and use hummingbirds to transport them from flower to flower. These mites eat pollen, actually. Uh, you know, hummingbirds are a whole little ecosystem unto themselves. But anyway, looking pretty good. I could certainly deal with it in Lightroom. You could deal with it in Photoshop, however you do your noise. You could take it to a third-party noise program, whatever. But Pure Raw really, I think, hit a home run right off the bat on this shot in terms of getting rid of noise in the background and really, I think, enhancing the detail in the subject as well. So again, that one, a winner for me. Maybe a little smoothed out in the wings, but, but still, I, I think uh, DX, DxO has me up and ready to go to further process this picture, whatever I wanted to do with it. Let's take a look at one more old camera photo. Even It's an old camera, but I just took this a couple of months ago. I've been doing some camera trapping with my friend Paolo Valerio of Photo Verde Tours and with some of my friends here in Costa Rica who are doing a conservation project related to the taper, which is a danger. So we're setting out a camera trap for weeks at a time, and we got some cool shots. And this one was pretty good. We actually cropped this to a vertical because this wasn't really, this is kind of an outtake shot. We got some really sweet shots that we liked, uh, how we how we set things up and how we intended. But we kind of like this one. The tree it's at is its main fruit tree called the Hicarodanto, uh, which is also an endangered tree species. So we, we really wanted to get that in our shot. But anyway, this is a pretty nice shot. This is the raw file straight out of the camera. This is a Canon 60D. Good little camera, but certainly no... ISO champ and you know 400 uh, is is a is a push even for that camera especially in these dark conditions and you don't have a lot of resolution on this camera either 18 megapixels right I know years ago that would have been heavenly but you know these days it's like only 18 megapixels and you know it's not bad the taper was actually a little behind the point of focus again like I said this is an outtake this isn't really where we wanted him but it's not bad it's not bad at all especially when you consider that this isn't about a close-up of the taper's head. It's about part of the larger scene. But let's see if DxO Pure Raw could do any better. And you know, in this case, I'm really not that convinced. I think it wiped out a little too much of the detail in the taper. You can see it did a lot of noise reduction. I don't see that it really added any sharpness in the rest of the scene either. The tree looks about the same to me. Uh, the plants over here, the leaves, didn't really do anything with color with shadow in this case. Um, look at the foreground. There's really not a big difference at all for whatever reason um, with this picture. But let's say for the sake of argument, you know, I really liked what DxO did to this picture in general terms, but I don't like what it did to the taper in terms of, I think, getting rid of, you know, smoothing out some of the detail. Could I fix that easily? Probably. I'll just go over to the develop panel and I'll grab a brush. I'll double click effect to zero everything out. And ah, let me see something. Ah, this is a brush I had before. I forgot I did a brush on this guy. I see. Maybe. No. <laughs> Never mind. I thought maybe I had applied some noise reduction on my brush in Lightroom. And then if DxO is doubly smoothing that out, we're going to lose a lot. But in this case, I, I just think DxO applied too much noise reduction. Could I bring some of the detail back by working on my brush? I have that brush active, so I'm just adding to that brush that's along his, his uh, kind of face and ears already. Could I bring some of that back using texture, clarity, sharpness? Maybe. I'm not too convinced on this one, but this is the, the sort of thing you can certainly do with a DxO DNG file from Pure Raw. You can go into Lightroom and you can work over your previous adjustments. You can add adjustments. So I think this one was kind of a mixed bag, but I will say I would certainly try DxO Pure Raw on some of my favorite uh, challenging files that I've taken with older cameras.
Another scenario for Pure Raw to have a potential benefit is one that I had not thought of until I watched a video by the landscape photographer Sean Bagshaw, and he pointed out that perhaps even with newer cameras with low ISOs uh, for landscape images, but that have high contrast, maybe, you know, uh, massaging that raw data in, an, in the optimal way that, that DxO knows how to do might help us with shadow detail when we want to raise it. Sometimes I like deep shadow, so I don't really want to, always want to raise it, but I thought I'd check out a few pictures. This is a Talamanca palm pit viper, actually a new species of snake from the highlands here in Costa Rica. I took this with a Canon 5 DSR, a wide angle lens, a polarizing filter, a shutter speed of I think one second, and I added a little off camera flash just to help freeze the snake a little bit. And this is my raw file with nothing done to it. And it, it looks pretty good, right? Here is the DxO version. And boy, that snake is a lot sharper. Maybe some of this moss is a little bit too sharp even, perhaps. But but all in all, it, it's looking nice. It did get rid of, you know, a little bit of kind of grain in the water and things like that. But to my eye for this image, you know, it did some lens correction, which I didn't apply in, in Lightroom, which I, I could do to my raw file. Um, maybe not a huge deal so far for this one. Let's take a look at another one. This is actually from the mountains of Switzerland on a business trip uh, with a little bit of family trip time thrown in a couple of years ago. And this is up from uh, up above Lake Lucerne, and it's one of the most beautiful places. I, I wish I lived there sometimes. Uh, I wish I could uh, go between there and Costa Rica. In fact, that would be great. But this was like noon on a sunny day or 11 o'clock in the morning uh, with, uh, with a, a wide angle lens and a polarizing filter. And I think I stacked like a 10 stop neutral density filter on there so I could get some movement in the clouds. And this is my raw file with nothing done to it. And let's just take a look at, at the shadows in there, especially. Uh, not bad at all. You know, everything's looking good. Let's take a look at the DxO version. And as it loads up, you can immediately see we get increased sharpness all throughout the image. And it does get rid of a bit of that original grain from the image, even in the sky and kind of the smooth mountain areas in the distance. And again, it sharpens things up. And, you know, again, looking into the deep shadows, the DxO version, I don't know, it looks a little better, but it looks to me like basically what it did for this one was to sharpen things up. I want to look at one last image. This is taken from uh, the Patagonia region of Chile a couple of years ago. And this is sunrise over the Lago Sarmiento, which is also a great place to find pumas. We got some great pictures of pumas uh, near this area later in this, this same day. But this is a super high contrast scene, right? Sun rising right over there. Windy as heck, but but what a what a spot, what a beautiful place on the planet to be. This is my raw file with, uh, I think, not too much done to it. I might have done a few things in Lightroom, but that's fine because those will translate over to the DxO version. And what we see right away is how different the shadow areas look in this foreground grass. And I can't explain this, but it's brought out of the raw file um, already, you know, some detail in those shadows. And I didn't do anything additional to the DxO file. And if we take a look over here in the develop module, you'll also see that there's nothing done. These adjustments, highlights, whites, a little vibrance. I did those in the raw file. As you can see right here, the adjustments are the same and shadows are at zero, right? In my raw file, blacks are at minus one for whatever reason. And I go into the DxO file again, those values are exactly the same, blacks and shadows. So it didn't touch the sliders or anything in Lightroom or apply anything. It just extracted from the raw data that there was more shadow detail to be had in there. But let, let's take a look, because I think this is an interesting one that would speak to Sean Bagshaw's point. What happens? Uh, look, I've got nice clean detail in there. It's not the sharpest grass, but I told you it was windy. And this was a 1 30th of a second exposure. Fine. I want to go back to my raw file and I'm just going to increase shadows across the board for now. It'll mess up some of the, the rest of the image, but let's see if I could get that foreground to be looking about similar to what DxO was already starting with. I think I went a little bit too far, so I'm going to back off and then I just want to compare the detail in there. So this is the raw file with the shadows raised. 
and this is the DXO file where I'm starting out already and to me it looks uh, like it's certainly cleaned up some of the noise but uh, I've lost a little bit of detail I think in the foreground I could get that back through sharpening um, let, let's uh, just do one more thing let's say I wanted to push this even further and really crank this up and now in my raw file I can start to see the noise I'm going to go into the DXO file and start to raise the shadows in an equivalent fashion more or less and just see what that looks like and there I think I can see yeah that you might have some advantage I probably wouldn't push the shadows this far for this photo because it should be much darker than the sunrise sky but it looks like if you're really trying to raise shadows quite a bit you are going to get probably some some cleaner detail in those shadow areas I suspect that I'm not going to want to use DxO Pure Raw on every file I take, right? I mean, it's just going to make my catalog a little messier and it's going to take up some space. So what happens, especially when we have photos that are really sharp, that are well exposed, and that are really clean to begin with, taken at low ISOs, you know, the kind of photo where you look at it and say, wow, I'm not going to have to do too much to this one in post-processing, which is the case, for instance, with this llama in the Lauca National Park of Chile, up in the highlands. I think we were at like 4,500 meters when we took this shot in the Atacama region of Chile. I was with my good friends Keith Bauer and Rodrigo Moraga, and we were doing some scouting for our future Chile workshops. It didn't work out this place because of some logistical reasons, but man, what a beautiful place. And being up there and just being surrounded by snow-covered volcanoes at that altitude, incredible. And I really like this shot. Uh, it's taken with a 5DSR, I believe, low ISO, ISO 200, and a polarizing filter. This was taken handheld, actually, because I was kind of walking along with the llama. And it looks good right off the bat. And here is the DxO version, and you can see right away that it's a little more punchy in terms of color, which is fine, and I'm sure it did some lens corrections and things like that. But let's take a, a little closer look. There's our llama, you know, and that, that's a good file. Here is the DxO version of that. Uh, things move a little bit because it's doing lens correction, right? And so, so things might shift in the frame a little bit. But, you know, just looking at this, my impression is that, sure, it took away some of that fine grain from the low ISO in the sky and maybe even on the mountains. And it certainly sharpened things up. But to my eye, it sharpened things up too much and it's over sharpened to my taste. Yeah, definitely. I would prefer to start with this. And remember also that sharpening, you know, final sharpening, where you want it to look this crisp or maybe not even quite this crisp, that's going to be the last step in our workflow because we're going to sharpen to taste and according to the final output or the final intention of that version of our file, maybe for our web page, for a slideshow at the camera club, maybe for a magazine article, or maybe for a huge print that's going to go on the wall, our sharpening is going to depend on what we want to do with that, that file. So I wouldn't want to, start, want to start with an over-sharpened RAW file. So I think I would stick with my regular RAW file on this one and not go to DxO. Let's take another look. This is a little magenta-throated hummingbird. Beautiful little guys. They come to my feeder sometimes uh, right here at my house in Costa Rica. And I took this one with a low ISO and a slow shutter speed, and I used a little bit of flash as well because I wanted to do, to do this um, kind of thing that I like where, where I mix flash and blur. And so this turned out well, looks good, really can't see any noise. And when we look at the DxO version, uh, you know, just full size like this, we really can't see that there's much difference at all. Let's zoom in and take a look at what's going on. And that's the raw file, looks pretty good. The DxO file removed a little bit of that noise in the background that was there. But to be honest, that's the kind of noise I would not even worry about taking out for this file personally, whether it's for web or print. So DxO, sure, it did something, 
but I don't think there's anything important that it did. And if I wanted to take out a little bit of noise in this file, I could easily do that in Lightroom because there's not that much happening here. I think it made the colors on the gorget just a little bit, um, a little bit punchier, which is nice. But again, I could do that very easily in Lightroom or Photoshop, if that's what you do in, in Camera Raw or however you want to do it. Take another look, a quick look at a, a, a bat photo. This is taken, you might have seen some of these photos around. This is taken at one of our favorite lodges. And we actually set up this place where the bat photos are done along with the lodge, intending it to be for hummingbird photography. That didn't work out. We still don't really understand why, but the hummingbirds didn't really like it. But we discovered that the bats did, so we started doing this really cool bat photography. And so this is at night, but it's an all-flash exposure, and it's at a pretty low ISO, 400. And, you know, the effective uh, exposure time of this is the duration of the flashes, which is like one twenty thousandth of a second. So these are going to be really sharp, and it's well exposed. I haven't really done much to this photo at all. And just take a look here. Um, it looks good, right? Here's what DxO did to it. It basically just sharpened it up a little bit because there's not really any noise going on or anything like that. And so again, I would not feel the need to take this into DxO because I'm going to do my sharpening later and I'm going to get basically the same result. And let's take a final look at one of my favorite images. This is a cask-headed lizard that I took in the lowlands of Costa Rica on a really cloudy day along this kind of sluggish stream in the in the rainforest. And so I stood in, in the middle of the stream. The water was, I don't know, up to my knees just about, uh, almost past my rubber boots. I didn't get too wet. And this is just a long exposure photo with a 5DSR, a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter lens, super sharp lens to begin with, a polarizing filter, and a long shutter speed of 3.2 seconds because I wanted this silky effect in the water. What I really loved about this photo, of course, was the kind of a uh, complementary kind of earth tone color palette all around. And of course, the sweep of these roots, which are of a tree called Soto Caballo in Spanish, and how this guy is just part of his environment in there, and it's got a really strong composition. Everything's good. You might think, well, for this photo, Greg, maybe DxO would help with shadow detail if I wanted to lift those shadows. But in fact, I took shadows down a little bit because I really wanted to darken the shadows. I'm not interested in bringing any shadow detail back into this photo. If I were, maybe DxO Raw would do something for me. But let's take a look how this looks just in my raw file. And that guy's nice and sharp. You know, these guys, once they're camouflaged and they think you don't see them, they don't move at all. Let's take a look at what DxO did for me here. And wow, I don't like that at all. That is really way over sharpened. And so I think DxO, you know, just has some problems with files that are really sharp and clean to begin with, where it tries to apply too much sharpening. That, that's my conclusion from this, this small sample size, at least. And so I don't think I would do DxO for this photo. But let's just take a, a little hypothetical case here. Let's say that I really did want to open up the shadow detail in these dark areas. And I knew from experience that DxO was going to allow me to do that and retain more clean detail in those shadows. I still have all this over sharpening. What could I do about that? Um, if I just desharpen the whole photo or take sharpness down, that might work. Um, that, that might work, but take a look at what happens in develop. And I go to the detail panel of the DNG file that DxO Pure Raw produced for me. And I don't have anywhere to go here. Sharpening is already at zero, so I can't take sharpening down. But I'm going to show you a little trick. And again, let's say that, you know, we, we wanted DxO for some other reasons, but we weren't happy with the fact that it over sharpened things. I'm going to grab a graduated filter and I'm going to hit the shift key which allows you to keep a straight graduated filter. And I'm just gonna draw it from the top, but I'm gonna start right here at the bottom. So it's basically a grad filter that encompasses the whole thing. I'm gonna double click effect so that I get rid of any previous um, adjustments I had loaded up on the, on the grad filter. And now when I hover over it, you can see in red that I'm affecting the whole image. That's cool because now what I can do, I can start to reduce sharpness to a degree. And so I'm going to zoom in and take a look at this guy and just start gradually, gradually bringing the sharpness slider down and see if I could get it back to, you know, a degree of sharpness that I think is a little more reasonable for this photo. 
that looks like it's almost too much. I'm sure if I played around, I could get maybe to a balance that I was happy with. I don't know. It would take some experimentation with this, but I'm sure we could, uh, you know, maybe if I took texture down a little bit too, that's actually looking a little, little better. Like I said, I'm sure I could, I could make that happen if I did want to keep, um, you know, other things that DxO Pure Raw did to this file. That would be a good trick and a nice way to do it. Of course, if we wanted to remove the sharpening only from part of the image, we could choose a radial filter or a brush as well. But putting a grad over the whole photo and then doing our adjustments there might be a fix for when DxO over sharpens things. You know, it didn't occur to me at first that perhaps DxO Pure Raw might have some advantages for drone photographs. I like doing a, a bit of aerial photography with my drone every once in a while, and drones tend to have pretty small sensors, so they're going to be prone to noise, perhaps even at lower ISOs. Here's a shot of one of my favorite beaches on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, and this was taken right just basically after sunset almost. Uh, I, I did it that way because I wanted to get a little bit of, of kind of slow shutter speed movement in the water. And so this is one sixth of a second and it's with the lens as wide open as it goes, f2.2, and an ISO of 770, which I guess is noisier than 760. I don't know where I got this weird ISO value. But anyway, I think it's a cool composition. It's a really neat beach. But look at all this noise. This is the DNG, the original file straight out of the drone. The drones don't produce raw files, NEF or CR2 or anything like that. They produce DNGs, but this is right out of the drone. And, you know, it's pretty noisy. Um, and it, it's okay. But let's see what Pure Raw did. And for one thing, the colors all of a sudden just popped a little more, which is nice and saves me a couple steps in Lightroom perhaps. And look at how it handled the noise quite well and the detail pretty well too. You know, these palm trees, uh, one sixth of a second, there's a little breeze uh, as there often is around the ocean, of course. But I think this is a vast improvement from pure raw back to the original raw file. And that would definitely save me some work. So that, that was a, a great thing to know. Here's another drone shot from the same beach, and this is my original DNG, my original RAW from the drone, and it's okay. Again, I wanted, uh, here I had 0.8 seconds. This was taken a little earlier in the day, but I wanted that kind of, uh, you know, silky water a little bit. Drones amazingly can pull off some pretty slow shutter speeds if it's not too windy. But, you know, what really is going on here, there's some noise, sure, even at ISO 100, but it's this weird color cast, and check this out. These are the settings um, that, you know, the temperature as it came out of the drone, the tint, whatever. And, and I did a little exposure. I did a little whites, a little blacks, did some stuff with dehaze and vibrance, whatever. But I don't understand where that tint is coming from. Let's see what Pure Raw did and look at the difference. All of a sudden, the colors are really true. And if you look over here again, it didn't change the white balance. It didn't change the tint. My um, Lightroom adjustments are, have been written over to the new DNG out of DxO, and this is just a world of difference. I would have spent probably a lot of time trying to get rid of this weird color cast, whatever it was. I don't know what kind of magic DxO worked on this one, but I'll tell you what, it is way better than what came out of my drone. Uh, just look at the difference, not only in terms of color, but in terms of uh, kind of noise and like weird banding sort of stuff going on there. Hands down. DxO is the winner on this one. Now, here is a final drone shot I want to look at. This is from the high Atacama, Atacama Desert of Chile. Uh, these beautiful salt lakes and sand, and it, it's amazing. And from the air, it looks even more amazing. I just love these patterns. And, you know, this is pretty good. This is ISO 100 and 1 800,000th of a second. This was 
11 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Ton of light. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, sand and salt out there. So there's texture in all these things. And, you know, this is a pretty good result. It's a super clean file. And Pure Raw on this one, I think, did not work. It didn't really make any big difference. Here's the original. Here's the DXO. Colors look about the same. It did a little lens correction. But what I don't like is that it tried to do noise reduction where it shouldn't have. And I think it's wiped out a lot of that kind of fine micro texture in there that to me is really more indicative of, you know, what this place is like with all this sand and salt. And just take a look. I like this much better than I do the DxO version because it, it, it took out noise where it didn't need it and kind of over sharpened edges a little bit. So in this case with low ISO and really good light, um, I don't think I'll probably be going to DxO Pure Raw. For other things where I have color cast for my drone or where I have high ISO drone shots, DxO is the clear winner. That was a workout. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed producing it. If you appreciate the effort that I put into this, give me a like, but more importantly, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you're notified the next time I post a video. And if you really want to show me some love, you can buy your copy of DxO Pure Raw, which is on sale for $90 for the next couple of weeks by using the affiliate link down below. You pay the same and I get a little extra money to support my gourmet Costa Rica coffee habit, which is the law here, by the way. You have to drink good coffee in Costa Rica. So I'm only complying with the law and you could help me do that. Thanks so much. So I'm going to be making DxO Pure Raw a part of my daily workflow. And by the way, even though I'm an affiliate, I have to pay for it. So I'm going to put up my $90 and I'm going to use it whenever I see a photo that I think, you know, has some colors that are kind of whack that has a lot of noise that I'm going to have to deal with. I know I have to do selective noise reduction, which isn't difficult, but it's time consuming whether you use Lightroom Camera Raw or whether you have a different method um, in Photoshop or a different noise reduction program that you'd have to use. DxO Pure Raw is going to take that, take care of that for you right away. Um, also images that aren't quite as sharp as I like, I'll look at it then. And of course images also, as we saw that where I really am concerned about bringing out the maximum amount of shadow detail without it degrading. Because it looks to me that DxO Pure Raw can help even with low ISO files taken with really good cameras, really good lenses, but where you have that high contrast, high dynamic range, they can really help you to obtain in the end cleaner, really nice looking detail in the shadows. I'm going to use it for my drone photos as well because uh, there are some color issues. And often with drone photos, since they're smaller sensors, you're dealing with some noise and DxO Pure Raw seems to take care of that very nicely. I'm not going to use it with low ISO photos that are well exposed, super sharp. And where I look at a photo and say, you know, I don't think I really need to do anything to this at all. Why would you run it through DxO Pure Raw? And so that's how I'm going to start putting it into my workflow. Am I going to run every one of my images through DxO Pure Raw when I import a card? That would be absolutely insane. I'm going to stick to my normal workflow where I import a card and then I go pretty ruthless and start deleting photos that just aren't up to snuff, right? And so I'm just going to keep out of a shoot, you know, 10 day shoot, I might keep only a hundred pictures, whatever, do what you want to do. But I would suggest only using DxO Pure Raw for those special photos that are going, going to go in your, into your portfolio and that you know are going to present some challenges for you in post-processing. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you'd like to travel with me in the field at some point, workshops are starting to come back. I'm almost fully vaccinated. That's a good deal. Check out the workshops page at my Deep Green Photography website right down below. And in the meantime, I hope you guys stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.